Archaeologists thought they understood how the first Americans arrived. A land bridge, a thawing continent, a slow march south. Then a shallow rock shelter in Oregon uncovered evidence that didn't extend the timeline. It crushed it. Inside Rimrock Draw, researchers found a butchered camel sealed under ancient volcanic ash. Nearby lay stone tools made from a material that doesn't exist anywhere in the region, along with proteins from animals that vanished thousands of years before any accepted migration route should have existed. If these findings are correct, the entire story of early American settlement collapses and reconstructs itself from the ground up. Subscribe to Stone and Bone if you want the discoveries that challenge comfortable history, not the ones polished for textbooks. 18,000 years ago, Central Oregon was locked inside the coldest chapter of the last ice age. Glaciers dominated the landscape. Sea levels dropped by hundreds of feet. Storms reshaped the desert into a harsher world than anything we see today. Yet life moved across this frozen terrain. Ancient bison, prehistoric horses, and camelops, the last North American camel, towering seven feet at the shoulder. Rimrock Draw sat exactly where survival made sense. A natural overhang that shielded hunters from brutal winds, a vantage point over migrating herds, and reliable access to water. No one camped here by chance, someone understood the rhythm of this glacial world. If the idea of humans thriving in these conditions surprises you, tell me in the comments. Quick explanation. The last glacial maximum was the coldest point of the last ice age, when massive ice sheets covered much of the northern hemisphere. Anyone living here needed knowledge passed down across generations. Everything about Rimrock Draw suggests purpose, not wandering. The dig started like any other, a few flakes were expected, maybe a hearth. But instead, archaeologists hid a thin, pale band running across the shelter floor. Volcanic ash, not the kind from the modern eruption. This layer belonged to the Set S eruption of Mount Street Helens, more than 15,600 years old. And volcanic ash is nature's timestamp. Each eruption releases a unique chemical fingerprint, letting scientists know exactly which eruption produced the layer. Anything trapped beneath it must be older. No debate. No reinterpretation. Under that ancient ash, the team uncovered a camel mandible with clean slicing marks, controlled cuts, intentional angles, work done by human hands. Stone tools rested nearby, in untouched sediment. No burrowing animals had disturbed the layer, no flooding shifted anything. The scene was preserved exactly where it had been left. Camelops once roamed North America, but vanished by the end of the Pleistocene. Finding its bones isn't unusual. Finding proof that humans butchered one 18,000 years ago changes everything. The jawbone showed clear signs of disarticulation and meat removal. Impact marks indicated where limbs were separated. This wasn't scavenging. It was systematic processing. To determine age, researchers dated the camel's tooth enamel. Enamel is incredibly dense and holds carbon well, making it one of the most reliable materials for radiocarbon testing. Quick explanation. Before present uses the year 1950 as the baseline, because nuclear testing after that point changed global carbon levels. So, 18,250 BP, means 18,250 years before 1950. The result landed at roughly 18,250 years. That single number detonates the traditional model of American migration. The ice-free corridor, the supposed entry route, was still sealed by massive glaciers at that time. According to the old theory, humans simply couldn't have reached Oregon yet. But someone did. They hunted a massive camel. They butchered it with skill. They left tools beside it all thousands of years earlier than anyone was supposed to be here. If this kind of evidence makes you rethink everything we've been told about the first Americans, share your thoughts below. The next discovery didn't just deepen the mystery. It widened it. Beneath the ash, archaeologists uncovered small, finely shaped scrapers carved from bright orange agate. Razor sharp. Symmetrical, clearly crafted by people who knew exactly what they were doing. But there was one problem. Orange agate doesn't exist at Rimrock Draw. Not in the basalt walls, not in the surrounding desert. It had to be carried in from miles away. That single fact changes the interpretation of this site. These weren't random wanderers. These were people who understood where to find the best stone and returned to those places deliberately. One scraper still held microscopic traces of ancient bison blood trapped inside tiny fractures in the tool. 
Protein residue analysis confirmed it. This wasn't a tool dropped by accident. It was a tool used here, on an animal butchered in this shelter. Once the dates were confirmed, the biggest question hit with full force. If humans butchered a camel here 18,250 years ago, how did they get to Oregon so early? The traditional story claims people entered through an interior ice-free corridor that opened between two massive glaciers. But at that time, the corridor wasn't just difficult. It was sealed shut under hundreds of meters of ice. So researchers turned their attention west. During the last ice age, sea levels were more than 400 feet lower, exposing vast stretches of coastline. Along that coastline grew rich kelp forests, ecosystems filled with predictable food. Fish, seals, shellfish, and edible plants. Archaeologists call this path the Kelp Highway, a migration route traveled by people using small boats long before the continental interior thawed. The evidence supports it. Cooper's Ferry in Idaho, at least 16,000 years old. Paisley Caves in Oregon, human genetic traces older than 13,000. Monte Verde in Chile, nearly 18,000. Rimrock Draw joins that pattern perfectly. If you had to choose between a blocked glacier corridor and a rich coastal route filled with resources, which seems more realistic to you, comment below. Every discovery that threatens a long-held theory attracts critics, and this one was no exception. Some argued the camel enamel wasn't enough, they wanted a directly dated tool or hearth. Others suggested sediments might have shifted over thousands of years. But every challenge was tested, and every time, the evidence held. The volcanic ash provides a hard time boundary. Its chemical fingerprint matches the Mount Street Helens set S eruption. The dirt layers show no bioturbation, no burrows, no root channels, no water disturbance. The artifacts and bones lie exactly where they were originally deposited. Scientific skepticism is healthy. It keeps the field honest. But when the evidence is this clean, this consistent, and this verifiable, there comes a point where skepticism becomes resistance to change. The story emerging from Rimrock Draw isn't about a brief stop or accidental visit. It's about real people living real lives in a glacial world. To hunt camelops animals weighing over 1600 pounds, you need coordination, strategy, and technique passed through generations. To craft tools from non-local agate, you need knowledge of distant landscapes and the ability to travel significant distances for the best materials. To occupy this shelter successfully, you need to understand seasonal water sources, migration routes, and the behavior of animals in a frozen climate. These weren't newcomers learning the land. They were people already adapted to it. If this changes how you imagine the first Americans not as struggling survivors, but as skilled and capable drop your thoughts below. The most powerful support for Rimrock Draw doesn't even come from North America. It comes from everywhere else. Across the world, humans were reaching extreme environments far earlier than traditional American timelines allow. In Siberia, people lived near the Arctic Circle more than 20,000 years ago, enduring temperatures colder than anything Oregon faced. In Japan, coastal communities built boats and navigated island chains during glacial peaks. Australia was populated over 40,000 years ago requiring open water crossings that demand planning, cooperation, and maritime skill. And in South America, Monte Verde shows human activity nearly 18,000 years ago, matching the age of Rimrock Draw almost perfectly. This isn't a fluke. It's a global pattern of early exploration and rapid adaptation. The only outlier was the old North American model and Rimrock Draw removes that last holdout. The most unsettling possibility isn't what archaeologists have already uncovered. It's what remains untouched. The deepest artifacts in the shelter lie below the dated camel remains. And in archaeology, depth means age. If the camel jaw already dates to 18,250 years, then anything beneath it must be older. How much older? That's the question no one can answer yet. There could be hearths buried deeper in the sediment. There could be tools carrying proteins from even earlier hunts. There could even be ancient human DNA preserved in the soil genetic traces that reveal which population reached Oregon first. Luminescence dating, residue analysis, and sediment DNA testing could push the timeline back again and again. Every inch the archaeologists dig risks, reshaping not just American history, but the story of human migration across the planet. If you think the deepest layers might hold evidence older than 20,000 years, let me know what date you think we might hit. 
Put the discoveries together, and the conclusion becomes impossible to avoid. Humans were in Oregon at least 18,000 years ago. They weren't trapped behind glaciers. They weren't waiting for ice corridors to open. They were already hunting, moving, settling, and adapting to a world most of us couldn't survive a day in. The Clover's first narrative collapses under this weight. The coastal route becomes not just plausible, but necessary. And the first Americans transform from late arrivals to pioneers who mastered an unforgiving landscape thousands of years before experts believed anyone was here. This isn't one discovery rewriting history. It's one discovery aligning perfectly with global evidence that was already pointing in the same direction. If you want more stories that push archaeology forward instead of holding it back, subscribe to Stone and Bone. And tell me in the comments, which route makes more sense to you now, the frozen interior or the coastal world of kelp forests and hidden harbors?